Your presence here today reminds us all that the partnership between our two great nations is broad, it's many-sided, in its fundamentals, it's bipartisan. A moment of political bravery. With George W. Bush watching, Simon Crean stands up against his invasion of Iraq. Now, the Australian perspective is bound to differ from time to time with the perspective of the United States. And of course, on occasions, friends do disagree, as we did on this side, with you on the war in Iraq. Prime Minister John Howard had committed Australian troops to the invasion of Iraq. Iraq must not be allowed to possess weapons of mass destruction. For the security and stability of our world, Iraq must be disarmed. Australians out of Bush's war. Simon Crean and Labor were not on board. He even visited Australian troops as they departed for the Middle East and told them what he thought. I don't want to mince my words because I don't believe that you should be going. And I was a university student at the time and it's easy to forget just how profoundly um, difficult that was for him. But he did it because that was the principled stance to take because he valued the lives of those servicemen and women so greatly that he didn't want to see anything done that wasn't fully thought through, that was the, you know, the final option for our country. That was the hallmark of his political career, not just in Iraq, but in how he conducted himself every day in politics and in life. And Simon saw the truth of it and decided to stand against it. It was an important statement of principle. He's been proven by history to be absolutely right, but he was vilified for it at the time. And I tell you, that took some guts. This principled man had labour in his blood. His father, Frank Crean, was a Whitlam government minister. He had a, a really loving dad, a wonderful relationship with his, his mother and father. Simon Crean soared to the top of the union movement, first with the Stormen and Packers. Well, obviously the membership have determined that they're prepared to dig in. And then with the ACTU, as he helped Bill Kelty forge critical agreements with the Hawke government, the Wages Accords. I was only a young trade union official around that time, um, but boy, it took some guts on their part, on Kelty and, and Crean's part during that period, because can you imagine going to your own constituency in the union movement and saying, right, we've agreed to bring tariffs down, that means, yep, lots of people are going to lose their jobs. Well, the Accords saved the Australian economy and provided us with a basis to prop and modernise our international engagement and, our, uh, and the character of our productivity. Uh, it was, they were absolutely critical. They established things like Medicare, universal superannuation, and transformed the economy by bringing down tariffs and stimulating investment in new parts of the economy. That promoted productivity growth and employment growth, improved people's living standards, and it really changed the country uh, from that point on. So to be a, a player at that time, as Simon was, you know, means that you contributed to a very significant part of Australian history. Simon Crean. Simon Crean won a federal seat in 1990 and went straight to Cabinet. He was a Labor Titan, really. It's his background in the Labor movement that he brought into Cabinet. And so for the Labor market, Labor uh, uh, relations elements, of uh, what we had to do at the cabinet level and in the caucus, uh, Simon was absolutely critical. Eventually, he took the ALP's reins during John Howard's long tenure. I'll be a consensus leader, but I will drive the agenda. In his parliamentary career, he served as a cabinet minister under the Hawke Keating, Rudd and Gillard governments. An extraordinary career of achievement where he made a difference in every one of his portfolios. He stood up to George Bush and John Howard. He sparred with Kim Beasley and was eventually replaced as opposition leader by Mark Latham. It was a shame that we lost Simon and that he didn't have the opportunity to um, run an election campaign for Labor and stand for, you know, to, to put himself to the Australian people to be elected as Prime Minister. 
He remained in Parliament for a decade, a minister in the Rudd and Gillard governments and a mentor to Labor's next generation, including Claire O'Neill, who would succeed him in the seat of Hotham. When he joined the Labor Party and the union movement, it would have been incredibly rare to have a woman in a senior role. Uh, the Labor Party, the union movement, Australian politics was totally dominated by men. But Simon was incredible in his, the support he gave to women, extraordinary support that he gave to me. Uh, but women right across um, the Labor Party and the union movement have been saying today how much his support meant to them. He, he had a genuine kindness. He was also had a great diligence. He was a very hard worker. He was always thinking about the problems he had to hand. He was really, really good on regional and agricultural Australia. He was a politician of the old school. Find me someone today who is as respected widely across the political spectrum, who has that decency imbuing every action that they take. Uh, and I think we can all look back on that and, and learn a bit from it. It is, a, it is a better, profoundly important style of politics. But he's always driven by trying to get things better for a lot of Australian people and that's why he stayed in Parliament and why I think he's one of the most significant contributors to Australian political life over the last 40 years.